to ask about the flamingos. At an antiques dealer in West Sussex, Drew is tickled pink. I like them. Have they all got names? They all have names. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A chair knocks the stuffing out of him at a converted cotton mill near Manchester. God, it's had a proper kicking, this one, hasn't it? It's very cool, that deconstructed look, though, at the minute. Deconstructed. <laughs> and at a sprawling family estate in Lancashire, a fire guard sets Drew's passions alight. Nobody else here likes this except me. It's, <laughs> it's fantastic. It's lovely. <laughs> Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Wow. Blimey. Look at this. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Is that marble or stone? He bargains hard. 16. 1750. 16. Sold. Marvellous. And there's nothing he won't buy. I would sell it for 2000 I've got to get a deal. It's in my nature. With help from Rebecca... I'll try the good. You drive me round the bend. Lovely. I'll just go downstairs and we'll sort out payment. And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. Every day, Drew's website gets hundreds of hits with customers ready to buy. I'll put a copy of the receipt and the invoice in the post to you. Making up to 30 sales a day, it's a constant battle to keep the shelves full. I need stock for my shop and I need to go to places where I can buy it at the right money and lots of it. The actual best thing I can do when I'm looking for a lot of stock is lots of stock. Drew thinks he can hit the jackpot at a small town in Sussex, where there are over two dozen antiques dealers to choose from. It's a 300-mile journey, but it should pay off. Petworth has always been known as one of the top antique destinations in Great Britain. We love Petworth. Drew went there when he used to be dealing out of the back of his van in the old days. Um, and also, it's a beautiful town. Petworth was a very, very big hotbed of the antique scene in the UK. Less than so towards the last few years, but still, still has a lot of dealers there. To some degree, everybody feeds off each other there, and it's very good for business when that happens. And I have traditionally always done well there buying. Towns National Park. It inspired 18th century landscapers and artists to create some of their best known work. And it's attracted those with an eye for beauty ever since. Known as the antiques capital of the south, there are shops and warehouses dotted all around town selling antiques, artwork and high-end interior design pieces. Drew wants to visit as many dealers as he can. He's decided to kick off in the town centre at Petworth Antiques Market. Here there's an enormous range of antiques stocked under one roof. Catherine? Hello, yes. Hi, Drew. Drew. Nice to meet you. The market is run by Catherine Mandry a woman with a lifelong passion for vintage items who's been running the market for two and a half years. So how many dealers you got in here now? Um, we've got 42 at the moment. A lot of the originals are still here, many of which have been... Two people walk through my door with a van load of stuff. I'm going to be able to buy one or two things, aren't I? So I'm sort of taking the odds down of finding something. It's a brilliant opportunity for Drew to search through all kinds of antiques in one setting. But with so much to sift through, it takes an expert eye to seek out the best potential buys. I think you have to keep looking and looking and looking and looking for so yeah. much stuff. How, how often That's do it. people restock? Oh, continually. Loving the colour. It's almost like a Christmas tree colour, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a lot going on. 1890 painted coffer, all original. If you imagine that now in a, a modern setting, in a modern bedroom at the foot of a bed, you know, it's a lot you can do with it and the colour's just great. This late 19th century tricolour storage trunk still has its original paint and hinges. It was probably made in southern Europe. It'd be worth around £500. And 250 by it? I want to make you happy. 260 Five Sold. Thank you. It's marvellous. Thank you very much. Love it. It's really good. Like, it's not just a bit good, it's really good. And that will make a whacking profit for us because it's a belting piece. With so much stock stretching as far as the eye can see, Drew has to be especially vigilant not to miss a potential bargain. And there's another item that's caught his attention. See this inkwell of the sort of fighting dog? Yes. That. Why don't you get that out? Mm, of French. 19th century. Love the dog's face yeah. on it. It's just a great look. It's a sort of French mastiff kind of fighting dog. With it is a faux bamboo quill with a matching little mastiff's head on it. Just access to ready-made bottles of it. 
This led to an increase in demand for desktop inkwells. With the Victorian passion for nature and wildlife, they were often made in animal form. This cast iron French version is in good condition and could be worth around £400. So we've got 200 on this 68. and 68 on that. It's over the 20%, but I'd like to 200 quid if I could. Yeah. Well, I don't want to see them separated, and I know that it's going I'll sell, to... I'll sell. Well, it's going to a home that's going to sell them straight away. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Can we do a deal? 200 quid? Well, Thanks. Thank you. Great. That's two deals down, and Drew's quickly spotted something else he likes the look of. A Jerusalem table. Why was it called that? They were sold as a gift in 20s and 30s. This one is made from hard fruit wood and a pine base with bobbin legs. These are made by turning the wood on a lathe as the shapes are carved. Bobbin or spool furniture was a popular design feature of late 19th and early 20th century chairs and tables. This one, as it stands, could be worth around £200. What's that one like? 125. How cheap can that be? How good value can that be? <laughs> I've got a figure in mind I want to pay for it, because I think it, that, might, that might be all I can get for it. I'm thinking 80 quid. You're thinking 80? Yeah. How about 90? 90 quid. Good value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Price people don't really consider the age. They're not too bothered. It's does it fit? Is the colour bright? That's all. Is this, am I having a taste bypass? You, yes, with ceramics concerned, you shouldn't be allowed to touch them. There are no lame ducks when it comes to Drew's eye for a deal. His aim to get as much as he can from one trip is paying off so far, with three new items from the first location. Next, Drew and T are heading to dealer Anthony Short, who collects pieces from the 18th right up to the mid-20th century. Anthony, hello. Morning. Hi, nice Morning. to meet you. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, well, thanks. How are you doing? Good tea. Morning. All right. Wow. I've got to ask about the flamingos. I like them. But it's just fun. Good I, quality. I want one. They are good quality. They're tin. Tall. Yeah. And they're all different. They all have a different sort of. You're going to tell face me they, if you tell me they have different pearls, are they? They're 150 each. I do like pink. How many did you buy? 160. And 60 of them went in one week. Once seen as a kitsch item, plastic flamingos became a popular sight on lawns in the 1970s when the garden trend spread to the UK from America. These ones are a contemporary take on the look. Made out of metal, they stand over three feet tall and can be used both outside and inside the home. Proving highly popular, this pair could be worth around £400. Well, what if I buy two? What if I take one pink one and one, one orange one? Can we do a bit of a deal on... Sure. You can? What can you do if I take one of these? Uh, I'll do 200 for the two. Thanks, Sol. Thank you very much. They're great. I'm going to put one in my pond in Gary. I'm, so, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's time to fly. Drew's aiming to fill the van, and there are plenty more shops to pop into. Okay. Well, I think you had me at Flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> Drew's clocking up a strong range of items at very reasonable prices. Next, he wants to check out a dealer he's been to before. Hi, Sheila. Hello. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Fine, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Hello. I'm good. How are you doing? Shop looks fab, as usual. Specialising in 19th and 20th century artwork and furniture, Sheila Hart has been helping to run John Giles Antiques for 30 years, and it's a bit of a Petworth institution. Traditionally, with Sheila and her partner, I've always done particularly well. They always have good, interesting pieces, real mix, and they price to sell. Tell me about the sits particularly well, doesn't it? Love the stretcher. But it's quite good and you've got a very good overhang. Yeah. Yeah, you could use that in a kitchen, couldn't you? Mm. This seven-foot-long table made from two planks of pine was probably originally used as a refectory or library table. Able to seat up to ten people, this is ideal for an open-plan, modern interior-designed home. It needs little repair and could be worth around £2,000. What do you say the best was? Well, I'm hoping to get twelve. I don't want to sort of kick you too hard. Is that is that it? Salvage expert Drew Pritchard is in the historic market town of Petworth in West Sussex. Things you have to keep looking and looking and looking and looking because there's so much stuff. It's on a large pine dining table. 
but will owner Sheila agree to part with it? What do you say the best was? Well, I'm hoping to get 12. I don't want to sort of kick you too hard. Is that is that it? 11.50. So, lovely. Thank you very much. like that. Lovely. Very, very nice. Very nice. Great. It's exactly why I come to this shop. I can buy something that needs minimal amount of work, that's absolutely bang on for the right money and turn it over again. Drew scored an impressive five items from three dealers, working hard to secure as much stock as he can. It's another old English <laughs> antique shop. There's still loads of places to go. Petworth, big town, so onwards, buy, buy some more. Hi. The coffee and, and uh, sweets. Sweet, yeah. sweet tooth, eh? Sweet, very sweet tooth, nice. yeah. The Coco Cafe, co-owned by Michael Pete, has been here for eight years. And in the last few months, they've expanded and started selling vintage artefacts. It's my perfect shop. You've got chocolate and wine. I've got some chocolate too. Have you? Which ones have you got? Dark, just the, these ones that are good for our gums so we don't, get uh, pull our, okay. don't pull our fillings out. Loving the little coffee shop. So cute. They sell sweets and wine and coffee and antiques. Just throw curry and old cars and scooters in there and I'm in heaven. Now that he's sweetened up, will Drew be tempted to bid on anything from one of the shop's storage areas? You've got an ambulance. Was that an ice cream van? Oh, it's an ice cream van, yeah. I wouldn't want to count on it as an ambulance. At the <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice little vest as well. Yeah. Just have one more. Just have one more. <laughs> oh, that's nice. 20s floral still life. 195. Got some room to manoeuvre on some of these, I'd say. One thing I buy an awful lot of is art. Art can be great for no money. You know, you can buy great art for 30, 40 quid. There's a piece in there that I really like. It's oil on canvas. The colours are really strong and vibrant. There's no rips to the canvas. It would fit right in in any interior. And that type of painting, layered with three or four others, looks particularly good. Second-hand artwork is a simple and effective way of adding a bright pop of colour to a plain wall or background. Once repositioned in a more neutral frame, this still life, painted in the 1970s or 80s, could be worth around £250. What's the, what's the best on it? Uh, do that for 145 Yes. Bit of colour. A splash of colour for not a lot of money. What? Colour, colour, colour. Very, very happy with that. I can push it on down the road. I can get a profit out of that for sure. Another item in the bag. But before Drew calls it today, there's one more place he can't leave without visiting. Hey. Hello, mate. Hiya. How are you doing? How are you right? doing? Good. good. I haven't yeah. seen you in a while. How yeah. are things? No, very good. You know, soldering on. Antiques dealer Patch Rogers specialises in one of Drew's favourite styles of design, original and copied arts and crafts furniture. Wow. Yeah, superb. This is how to do an antique shop. Last call of the day and a really good one. Patch is one of the leading dealers in design-led English furniture and decoration, specialising in arts and crafts, and the best. Uh, as I leaned over and have a look at that, I just wonder if I can pull it out from there. How is this what, American, lamp? American floor lamp. That kept the original Bakelite switch. Yeah, nice. Kind of nice light. touch. Nice reading light, isn't it? It's chair height. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with that it works well, doesn't it? Yeah. I like the safaris. Oh, don't get, don't, no, no. Yeah, they're nice. You're taking my eye off the off the lamp now, more towards the chairs. Great colour, better than usual manufacture. And then you've got that extraordinary amount of sort of massive amounts of leather lashed around the back and underneath, nice and thick, that just makes them that bit better again. Safari chairs were widely used by the British military as portable chairs for foreign campaigns and would have been made from light canvas. These 1960s leather versions are in £800. Can the chairs be like, I don't know, how, what's the stonking, take them away, we're doing you a favour deal, or can you not do it on those? Uh, I could do them for 14 mm -hmm. for the pair. I don't particularly like doing this, but will £1,200 buy them? Yeah. You'd help me up. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're great. Yeah, that's fab. At the end of a long and successful day, Drew's managed to get a fantastic range of items, all from just one location. Whenever I come buying in Petworth, I generally do well. Flamingos. <laughs> that's with dogs on.
anything at all with dogs. I love dogs. Really interesting, so saleable and on the money. The safari chairs are excellent and the quality is superb. Now this comes from buying from a dealer like Patch. And all I'm doing is putting the collection that I like together using my knowledge base, my eye, and then giving them to my clients. So I'm just buying things from my collection, things that I would live with. And I've done that really well here today. At Drew's warehouse in Clandidno, hopes were high for a big haul at Petworth. And Drew's eager to get the team's take on the new stock. Hello, hello, Enzo. I know, he's coming to say hello. Oh, you won't want to be out here, will you? He's oh. keeping me warm. Oh. You, lo you love shopping in Petworth. Love shopping in Petworth. We did well, didn't we, mate? Right, so we went to loads of places. This came from the Petworth Antique Centre. It's Jerusalem. It's a little bob in turn side table. Really put together quite well. 90 quid. There's a screw come loose underneath here. You do that, Gavin, give it a quick polish, it's ready to go. Bobbin tables have been selling since I can remember. Everybody loves a bobbin table. It's cute, it's small, nice wine glass, perfect. This is really nice. 260, original painted decoration. 1850s, 1860s travelling trunk. Drew paid £260 for the blanket box. That's a brilliant price. No laughing. Hey! How good are these? Oh, yes. I had to buy them. I thought they were a real giggle. Oh, they will. All the items from Petworth are in good condition and need no restoration. So they're ready to go straight up on the website. Drew may have a good range of new items, but never one to rest on his laurels is already preparing for his next trip. Because we did so well at Petworth, we've now got more stock on the shelves. So that means Drew can afford to take a bit of a risk on his next visit. My job is basically, yes, going out, taking a punt on a location, thinking, I've never been there before, it's worth a go. You just have to go to every single one. You can't just say, oh, there'll be nothing there and not go. You've got to go. Out. Right, so we're in Bury and we're up here to see Den Living and we're seeing Danny Healy and Paula Hopwood and they're interior decorators and suppliers, uh, furnishers and uh, upholsterers. They've got an old mill, an old cotton mill yeah. that they've bought and they've been transforming into showrooms and workspaces. Den Living is an interior design company who design and manufacture bespoke furniture from scratch and have been based in this cotton mill since 2010. Focusing on modern handmade pieces, this place is away from Drew's usual salvage hunting ground. But interior designer Paula and managing director Danny want him to have a look through their mass of old sample pieces. To stop buying things. Stop buying things, yeah, and sell things. I'm very much a magpie. If I see something I like it, I'll buy it. But we kind of now try to focus on the showroom and our core business, which is manufacturing as well. We just have to get it cleared now. Hello. How you doing? Hello. Paula, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. Well, it's a bit of a departure for us, really, coming to somewhere like this. <laughs> but I like it immediately. Yeah, it's really good. Well, what was it? A cotton mill? Yeah, for a cotton mill, textile mill, yeah. God, big space, yeah. isn't it? It's great space. I need something like this. Can we have a bit of a wander around? Yeah, of course, yeah. Drew mainly looks for unrestored items he can add value to. With mostly bespoke items available here, will there be anything he actually wants to bid on? That's an original. Yep, that's... So you're doing, what, bars, restaurants, private houses? Yeah. Yep, exactly. Contracting work? Yeah. Yep, bit of both. First impressions when I walk into here is not what I'm expecting. Usually interior decorators, unless they're the, the higher end of the market, don't have huge showrooms. Here, they've got an entire mill. It's huge, it's incredibly well laid out, well thought out, well put together and finished. This is our manufacturing, yeah? After you. Wow, pretty impressive, guys. And you're making all your own sofas as well. Yeah. Test field in production. We can kind of do everything from... A bespoke sofa to a sort of beautiful mirror or a lamp or, you know. So if I came to you and said, right, I've bought this pub. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. yeah. You can do that. Yeah. You'd be dead in a week, Scratch. Do what? You'd be dead in a week. What if I bought a pub? <laughs> 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 it's 
this is where he could find deals to be done. I think really it's, it's your old seating that I'm going to want. Okay, so this is where you store all the. Well, what? what, what well, is this? it's just become a storage area for excess product, shall we say. It's a mix. All the things Danny buys that we don't have a home for, yeah. basically. Come up here, yeah. So got, you have got some antiques stuff. That chair, for instance. Yeah, that's a lovely chair. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Bit of a steak, good colour. Ooh, dear me, yeah. God, it's had a proper kicking, this one, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very cool, that deconstructed look, though, at the minute. Deconstructed. <laughs> we prefer we prefer warm. This pleated leather studded armchair from the late 1800s is called a club chair, thanks to its height and elegant scrolled back and arm. But once repaired, it could be worth around 900 pounds. And the first thing I see is a very very good 19th century armchair in a terrible state. Back legs have been snapped and need repairing, and they're missing their casters, if they had any. The leather to the seat is heavily ripped, torn, and there's losses to it as well. And the back panel of leather is completely missing. But definitely want to buy it. We can fix that and sort that out. I'm thinking about 300 quid. Could we go a little bit up on that, or what if we kind of got parameters on that? A bit. I'll go a little bit more if you want. 350. Decorative salvage dealer Drew Pritchard is in Bury near Manchester at Den Living, run by Paula and Danny. Drew's usual stomping grounds, but it can be a risk worth taking as you never know what you might find. Drew has unearthed a 19th century leather armchair, but will Danny do a deal? I'm thinking about 300 quid. Could we go a little bit up on that, or what if we kind of got parameters on that? A bit. I'll go a little bit more if you want. 350? Should we go what we think, Paula? Well, it's only sitting up here looking sad at the end of the day, isn't it? I guess yeah. £350 is better. £350. And, and you've got space, you've got whole space there. You've got yeah. whole space. So we, can we have a deal at £350? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. Marvellous. All right, thank you so much. Marvellous, yeah. thank, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. There you go. Drew's managed to secure one piece of salvage so far, but will he find anything else worth bidding on? What, what about that one there? there? Isn't it? Yeah, it's nothing to do with it, that one. I'm having a, a proper good ferret around in here and it's very easy to spot things. There's loads of space, everything's at the same level. But over in the corner there, there is another very late 50s brown leather armchair. Big man chairs like that will sell all day long. This brown leather armchair marks a turning point in furniture taste in Britain around the mid 20th century. The passion for all things American in the post-war, post-austerity period resulted in an influx of US style furniture and homewares. This 1950s example of American-style seating has retro appeal today. And in its current dilapidated state, there's value to be added. It could be worth around £500. I buy these all the time, so I know what I can pay for these. Need a cushion, need a repair. £150. Some visiting a modern interior designer seems to be paying off with two deals done so far. Whenever I get a chance to buy one, I'll buy it. I bought one two weeks ago, it went the week after. I need another one now, I need another ten now. Spying potential new stock stacked all around, Drew's determined to find more to bid on. What about this old rack? Have we got any more of these? Mm, I don't think we do. With the Northwest's history as an industrial hub, it's not surprising that items from old factories and mills can be found tucked away. This open steel shelving rack is made to be used in its current state. Pieces like this always sell well and could be worth around £400. Age-wise, it's a bit of a strange mix. The frame itself was probably made around the 60s, 70s. You bought three. Bought three of them, didn't I? Yeah, this one's not quite as, not quite as good because they had lift-out trays oh, with right. sides on them that were really quite funky. I paid 125 for the other one. It was a, a, a better, so 100 quid. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we'll go with that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. These racks, I've recently bought and sold some. The client wants more, bit of work, and we won't even have to advertise it. We'll sell it straight away to the same company that bought the last lot. Drew's done really well at Den Living, securing three new items across varying eras to add to his sales list. One of the best things I bought today, actually, was the 19th century low brown leather button back armchair. We've got all of it going on, really, that people want now. 
They're doing great. Some empty spaces upstairs. Perfect. Everything has some attachment to it. But yeah, if we're going to crack on with our plan for the top floor, we need money. So uh, yeah. Time to let go. Time to let go, yeah. Definitely. Well, I didn't expect that. No. I didn't expect that at all. Usual interior designs don't have that sort of setup. That was really quite remarkable, to be honest. I was happy with what we bought as well. Drew's found three great items at Den Living, making the trip a risk that's paid off. Before Drew heads back to base, he wants to stop in at a country estate in Lancashire, just 50 miles away in the village of Scorton. It could be another risk, as prizing quality antiques away from stately homes can prove tricky. But it's a gas. It's a big old country manor house, and as you know, we very rarely get to buy huge pieces from, the, from these places, but it's worth the effort to go to these big old country houses because they do occasionally turn up the odd little diamond. Though the village of Scorton grew up around an 18th century cotton mill and the arrival of the railway in the 19th century, its setting isn't typically industrial. It's surrounded by the forest of Boland, whose gritstone fells, deep valleys and peak moorland have been awarded Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty status. The mid-Victorian Wiresdale Park, one of 900 listed buildings in the forest of Boland, has been in the Ewell family since the 1960s. Since 2010, it's been a destination estate, with a boating lake, tea house, and event household items to clear some space for the burgeoning business. He's enlisted the help of his godfather, Graham Thompson. Uh, it was amazing growing up here. Myself and my sister just had the complete run of the place. All the rooms were let to students, friends of the family. Um, Graham would come up every weekend, <laughs> and his wife, Wendy, and it was just a big heap of bohemian <laughs> journeys and adventures and we'd all go and have barbecues um, on the other side of the lake and you know it was it was totally glorious it was a kind of dream like childhood really <laughs> the dog's got the cushion <laughs> what are you doing that, oi, that's go gonna on. be sold let to go do. <laughs> that's the on, one here. item come here Hi, gents. Hello. The architecture is like a church. It is. Yeah. Is it a church? Built a by a man who built churches uh, all over Lancashire. I see. He didn't go far off plan. <laughs> <laughs> he had the building materials in yeah. stock. Yeah. 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 All the yeah. masons and stuff. So. Can we have a look inside? Yeah, let's yep. go in. This is different. It's, um, so you say it's been designed by a church architect. Yeah, so Austin and Paley, yeah. who were the, the local architects firm in Lancaster. It's, it's sort of church spec, what they've done. Entirely. Yeah, enti entirely. <laughs> Even the radiators church. in the floor are really good. Yeah. Victorian, you know, It'll survive, you know, yeah. a bomb going off. Survive our ownership. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Let's get started. OK, so... Uh, dining, oh, wow. dining room, yeah. We've got some good little parties in here. People always comment on the carpet. That's what people seem to like. Can't remember. Yeah. It's real axe, mister, not, not one of those pretend ones. <laughs> not yeah. axe, mister. Yeah. 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 That is good. We're now in the dining room of the main house and we are stood on rather a good Wilton carpet. It's beautiful, actually. Great colour. I mean, just, just great colour, particularly for now. Good size. Big, but not too big. Really nice condition. The colour is still pretty vibrant considering it's next to two massive windows. The carpet could be worth several thousand pounds, but sadly, it's not for sale. Instead, James is keen to interest Drew in a large sideboard. Super bit of furniture. Mm. Yeah. Try selling it. Oh, hello. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We can get into that. <laughs> Will that close again? Super quality. Look at it. Lasts for a million years. Yeah. But, yeah. but no one gonna... wants... It's disappointing. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Some days um, I go on house calls, we sort of set them up and I'll try and do two or three in a day if possible if they're local to me. Um, and sometimes it doesn't always bear fruit. In fact, to be honest, about nine and a half out of ten, we don't get anything. But what you do do by going to all the house calls is you meet people. And those people, if you get along and you sort of build up some trust with each other, there will be another house from another relative any day now in the future. They're nice. They're nice, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, they're, they're Japanese. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're very nice, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. God, they're very good. Best thing in the room. Look at the work. Mm. In terms mm. of retail, they are very, uh, very intricate, yeah. Look at the work on that. Mm. That dragonfly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Superb. 
two things that I spot in the room are, are a tropical hardwood inset with uh, copper, brass and bronze, figured and worked to within an inch of its life. Definitely the sort of thing I'd want to buy and easily sell. But they're not very useful as trays because... I know, the but things. they're beautiful. So, so <laughs> yes. they, you search everything. They're gorgeous. <laughs> yes, Look they at the work on that. Yeah. The trays are not for sale, um, and they say there's another one that goes with them as well, which has been damaged. Uh, it's a shame that would have made the day. That would have made um, made us a decent little lump of profit there. So nothing for sale so far. Drew's taken a risk coming here, as it can be difficult to buy from historic family homes. Is this a gamble he's going to regret? Determined to the last, he wants to have a look at one of the many outbuildings on the estate, the old coach house. Uh, this tack room, old tack room in here has an old fire surround, or whatever they're called, fire guard, buried in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's of interest. Can we drag it out? Yeah. Should, we dig, should we dig it out? Yeah. Okay. There we are. Now, nobody else here likes this except me. It's, <laughs> it's fantastic. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> the fire screen has an extremely simple design on which the influences of the arts and crafts movement can be seen. Probably dating from the early 20th century, it could be worth around £250. What we found is a wrought iron and copper fire screen. It's in terrible condition, but it still exists and it's not been messed around with. The fire guard is used in two different ways. So it would go in front of the fire so it was a decorative item so you weren't looking at a pile of old dust and coals. It's a shame the conditions is, shame, is against it, it but is financially it, yeah. what that's, what's that worth? What can I get for that done? I think the most I could give you would be 125 quid. Salvage specialist Drew Pritchard is at Wiresdale Park, a listed Victorian mansion in Lancashire. Well, quite a place. He's trying to bid on an unusual arts and crafts fire screen, but will James Ewell agree to let it go? I think the most I could give you would be 125 quid. I think that's a runner then, James. Yeah, I was through it in the metal skips. Really? Uh... It's lovely. It's a, it's a very particular style, and not a lot of people like it these days or are sort of into it at all, but it's... It's, it's got enough going for it for me to... Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's it's very, very different. Go. Graham's happy, but my father will say yes or no. I'm not, I can't pay any more. No, that's that's it. that would be fine. Drew's going to have to wait to seal the deal with James Ewell Sr. Meanwhile, they press on and investigate other outbuildings. Simple filing cabinet. No, not for me. Not for you? No. It's going on the skip. Oh, no, it's far too good for that. Somebody will give you money for it, just not me. Right, so we can yeah. take it to a dealer... Stick it on eBay. Stick it on eBay. Stick it online. Okay, great. Yeah. The till? Yeah, not me again, but they do have a following. Leave it alone. Don't clean it. It's by the best maker, which is national. Is it? Um, so, yeah, just leave it alone. Sell as is. And yet another outbuilding. There's something that harks back to James's Swallows and Amazon's childhood. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Tell me about this. Where do you get this from? 50 years after they built the house, uh, they built a pleasure lake around the lake and try and sell them crates and crates of salmon and trout. So that's where this has come from. God knows what we're going to do. It's here. absolutely beautiful. I tell you what, it's, it's got a lovely pair of Rolex on it. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. It being a flat bottom one as well, that's really, you know, that sort of sets it apart a little bit. Condition's really good. Value wise, would be, it's got to be worth at least £5,000, probably more. Do you know what I'd do with it? You've got a lake here, yeah? Yeah. And you're doing weddings. <coughs> yeah. I bet people would pay handsomely to be able to have a picture of mm. husband and wife floating around the lake in a boat. Great idea. All looking at each doughy eyed looking at each yes, other. Yes, yeah. as they do. Um, yeah. Before the misery kicks in, no, <laughs> uh, yes. um, yeah. row you around the lake yeah. for photography, a couple of swans floating about. Yeah. Five hundred yeah. quid. Five hundred quid. Get in the boat. <laughs> Drew's gone through Wiresdale Park with a fine-tooth comb, but without finding anything else to buy. He's now got to secure a deal on the fire screen with James Ewell Senior. Who will be mother? Oh, I'll do the mother. Relax. Well, the tea, so the tea room, is this now sort of an intrinsic part of the estate? Well, it's an ongoing project. It's my father, James. Oh, hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Drew? Nice to meet you. I believe we need to talk to you about the little fire screen. The fire screen? Okay. Yeah, the one in the shed, the rusty oh, one yes. with the bronze yes. uh, randles on it. Oh, yes, the fire screen. For sale? What is the offer? £125. Uh, Can't go up anymore. 
believe it was headed for the scrap pile. If you want to make a living, just look at our skit. James, what I'd like to do is be part of the action and say, you anticipate to sell it for how much? 250 restored. If you sell it for more than 250, I want 25% of the uplift on 250. Uh, uh, fine. And the place of sale. Fine. I'm only going to get 250 for it, max. <laughs> That's the asking price. I'll never get the asking price. But I can buy it for 125. Yes. Deal. <laughs> Come on. Deal. Deal. There you go. Thank you very much. And there's just one condition. I want a pound back for luck. <laughs> Yeah, right. not now. Right. Yeah, sell it. Luck money, that's fine. That's a yeah, common thing in the trade. Yeah, yeah. Today was good fun. I enjoyed it actually. Nice to meet new people. Today has been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Drew and T are complete legends. It's a very small pit design world, but it's very interesting nonetheless. Not valuable, really. Um, nobody's going to get rich off the back of that one. But it's not now going to be sitting behind the door. It will be proudly sitting in somebody's fireplace. I thought he gave us some really good advice, and uh, and that was very much appreciated. Guys, thank you very much. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Really nice to meet you. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Nice to meet you. Really nice to meet you, Drew. Good luck with it all. Oh, it's going to be fantastic, you. I'm sure. Thank you so much. Really enjoyed it. Drew's now heading back to Wales with four new items from his visits to Den Living in Bury and Wiresdale Park. We just sold one of the two of those. Three. It used to be a mill and this was in there when they bought it. It's not a very old. 100 quid. Then this one, which is Craig, black velvet cushion. That bit repairing. Repair, repair, caster. We've been to Wiresdale Park. We went through the whole place. And the only thing I could find was that. That's You're nice. joking, it's just so one piece. That's it. Page 125, it's worth 250. That's it. Master upholsterer Craig is tasked with restoring the leather chair from Den Living. First, he needs to repair the split in the arm. What I'm going to have to do with that is patch that. I'm going to have to get a patch in there and behind it. The leather needs a good clean. It's gone very dry and dirty. He glues and clamps in a new piece of leather. Squeeze that together like that. And once dried, he can clean the chair using leather polish. Casters. Just knock that in there. Before adding the finishing touch of a brand new black velvet cushion. That's the cushion finished. I'll just clean that off now. There we go. Chair finished. Then it's ready for the website. Most of the items from the five dealers at Petworth sold almost immediately to a variety of regular customers, as well as some first-time buyers based in London. The industrial-style racks from Den Living sell not to the clients who bought his previous batch, but a different buyer in Wales. And the fire screen from Wiresdale Park also sells to one of Drew's regular clients in Asia for a new restaurant opening. Finally, the retro-style metal Jordan, a lifelong antiques collector in Buckinghamshire. My mum and my brother, uh, full-time antique dealers. I've been brought up with antiques all my life, visiting fairs. So, yeah, always been involved in antiques. For Lee, finding the birds on Drew's website was a real salvage coup. They go with some old stuff, they go with some new stuff. So, for me, they, they fit perfectly. Anybody who comes to the house, loves the flamingo straight away, trying to buy them off me, but... Probably one thing I wouldn't sell. We did incredibly well at Petworth. Um, it's somewhere I've been going for years. I'll keep going there. It's a great antiques hub. And then you go to Wiresdale Park. We got one thing. It turned out well. We've sold it. But that's how it goes. That's the nature of the beast.